Welcome to another tip of the week. And this week, my tip is going to be uh, on the sh subject of what we're living right now and what platforms and software can help us in this isolation we're having to live due, due to coronavirus. First of all, I want to already apologize because I know this isn't my usual video quality of myself or my usual audio quality. I'm using my webcam instead of my usual camera and I'm leaving the windows open because that's the recommendation, the health recommendation uh, is that you try to leave uh, open your windows and your doors open so that there's air circulation and right now I think that's more important than having perfect audio and actually I'm gonna talk about that in in this video when I'm giving you some tips okay for audio and stuff like that so let's go okay so in this moment uh, that we're all self quarantined there are several problems but there there are a few that uh, relate to what I can talk to you about which is technology one is a lot of people are having to transition to remote work right because they're quarantined they're isolated in their home and but there's they still have to work they still have they still need to have meetings maybe teach a lot of teachers I know from school and universities they closed the school and university but decided that classes are gonna continue online so they're saying oh how can I learn how to do this how can I use this right what should I use what software should I use to do this to have meetings to be able to talk with people, with a lot of people, to be able to ex to exchange ideas, to be able to give up my my class to my students. Uh, so I'm going to show you a few platforms, and I'm going to show you thinking of another problem that's caused by the quarantine, which is the fact that a lot of people who are war who have quarantined are also receiving less money, especially the freelance workers like myself i am a private tutor i have private students that i have one of one one-on-one -on -one tutoring and what i teach is how to use the computers to people who don't know how to use the computer <laughs> so you can see my problem because i have adapted for a few of the students for to do that online and remotely but most of the students my students uh, some needed because they are teachers in other areas and they are now having to teach their students online and they don't know how to use. But most of my students are actually older people already retired who wanted to know how to use the computer, how to use the, the phone and stuff like that, but who have said that they're okay. They're okay with not having classes until we can have classes, on-site classes with, with me there with them. So I'm not receiving for those students. So you can see, so I understand that. I, I get that a lot of people are getting less money and not all the governments, some governments are helping, but, but for instance, here in Brazil, they're not, they're not helping. And so you still have water and, and electricity and rent and bills to pay. And some of those bills have increased because now you're home using electricity and water and stuff like that when you weren't. So I try to focus on tools that you can use for free, okay? So let's start here. I'm gonna start with Zoom. Zoom is a confer is a video conferencing, okay? It's a meeting and lecture tool that is not quite like you would be used to like Skype or stuff like that because they have the capability to to have a video conference a meeting with a lot of people zoom is a paid service but they have a free account that allows you to have meetings of up to 40 minutes so once the meeting gets to 40 minutes the meeting gets disconnected and you can start the meeting again but you have to do that if you on the uh, free account and they have up to 100 participants on the free account. So that's their power. That's how much they can stand. That on the free account, they can let you, can let 100 people connect on the same meeting. 
and they work like this. The host needs to have an account, but everyone, every participant doesn't need to have a, an account because every participant can just click here on join a meeting and then come here to join a meeting and just place the meeting ID that I'm gonna show you and join without an account. You can come here on the web server and schedule a new meeting. The first time you schedule a new meeting and you start the meeting, you will be asked to automatically to download and install the Zoom app if you're on your computer. If you're on your tablet or phone, you can go to app, the Apple Store or the Google Store and insta install the Zoom app from there. This is the Zoom app, okay? And this is what you're gonna need for the meeting. You can start a new meeting straight away without scheduling. You can schedule a meeting just like you would schedule the, a meeting on the browser, you can join a meeting. Again, when you join a meeting, if you don't have Zoom installed, they will ask you to install Zoom in your computer. Well, the download is gonna start automatically, but you won't actually have to log in with an account. You can just join the meeting with the meeting ID. I'm gonna start a meeting and this meeting is just with me. I won't be able to use my camera because I'm already using my camera for you guys. I already tried that on the video in Portuguese and so I already know that's not gonna work, but you could use, everybody can use their camera. You can invite people from here. You can share your screen and this is great. So maybe you want to show a PowerPoint presentation and you wanna share your screen. I have a whiteboard to be able to draw and write and stuff like that. And you can share any one of your open windows. And that this is interesting because your window is gonna be shown very big to the person but even if you move your window around or if you scale your window that's not going to change the view the person is having the person is still going to see the window big and uh, you have advanced which you can just choose a portion of your screen you can use computer sound only or you can maybe use a second camera and you can use files from one of these directly from one of these cloud services I'm gonna choose the screen and you see here that you have a control and what I like is that you can still annotate you can click here and annotate so you can come here and say look this is what I want you to pay attention to so I think that's super useful uh, because you can still annotate you have chat so you can chat with the participants in writing instead of talking you can record the meeting and you have emo reactions emoticons and there's a lot of stuff that you can use, but I wanted to show you this because this is basically the interface you're gonna be working and what you're gonna be able to use. The other software I wanna show you is Big Blue Button and it's a platform and actually a software that you can install in your server. And the interface is very similar. The things you can do are very similar to Zoom. I'm not gonna be able to show you because I just tried to show them and they're having server problems. That's also one of the advantages of big blue button right now there are a lot of big blue button you can use two ways you can either use here from their website from their service bigbluebutton.org or you can install them the software on your server but and they have integrations with moodle and wordpress and drupal that makes installing easier but you can even install in your server if you don't if you're not using one of those cms's and of course it's not just anyone who's going to install it's the person who understands of servers and stuff like that who takes care of the website and the servers on your organization so that's useful because what happens is right now bigbluebutton.org their website bigbluebutton.org because of the quarantine is having a lot of demand to them that usually they don't have. So they have had to have the restrictions and to meetings of 30 minutes and not allow recordings on people that are using their servers. And sometimes you have a hard time accessing them. Like now I've I tried accessing and right now here, see home, I go to home and they give me server error. But if you have their server, their software installed on your server then all you all you have to contend is with the traffic of your from your server you're the one who has to worry about that they're an open source and free project those two things aren't synonym open source means their code is open so you can alter the code to 
better adapt to your needs if you need to install this somewhere. But the use is free. So this is very good if, for instance, your institution or your school needs to use because they could install on their service and then they would only have to contend with the traffic from their own school, from their own students, not everyone who's connecting. So that's the difference between this and Zoom. Since this is a project that's, that's created kind of volunteer, they don't have as much resources as Zoom to be able to have those powerful, same powerful servers that Zoom has. But the software does have the capability of connecting a lot of people. Uh, I have a student that I just taught how to use uh, Big Blue Button, and Big Blue Button is installed on his on his university's website and servers. And he's gonna teach a lesson. He told me they're gonna be 120 students. So that's a lot of power, okay? It's just that they were developed for most people, pretty much people who usually use Big Blue Button, used like that, installed on their own servers. So the Big Blue Button servers weren't prepared to receive the the demand they're having now. So that's why they're having problems. But when installed on your service, they're very powerful, very useful. A different from Zoom is that you don't have to install anything on your computer. The interface you're gonna use is on your browser. So it's in your browser. So all you need is your browser that you already have. So you won't need to install anything. The recordings aren't recorded on your computer, okay? Because on Zoom, when you record, the recording is saved on your computer. On Big Blue Button, the recording is saved on the server Big Blue Button is installed on. And the capabilities you can see you have a whiteboard, you have chat, you have difference from Zoom, you have notes, so you can have class or meeting notes. So they're very useful for that. And just like Zoom, you can control what your participants can do. So if they can use camera, if they can use voice, if they can share stuff and so on. Then another option is Skype. And you're going to say, oh, but Skype, no one uses Skypes anymore. That's not true. <laughs> A lot of older people use Skype. Yes, because they learn Skype and they like Skype. And, and Skype is very easy to install and most importantly to send an invitation to someone else to to join a conversation with you that already has a link that installs the application for them and opens the application on the conversation and stuff like that. So for people who don't know how to use computers, who don't know how to use uh, devices like a phone, like a tablet, Skype is very easy to use and that's most of my students. So I've been using Skype and I share my screen and because you can share your screen on Skype so they can see what I'm doing. But the problem is, is, unlike Zoom, for instance, Skype doesn't let more than one person share their screen. So I can share my screen, but I can't see what the person is doing. And so what I do is I use Skype in conjunction with this software that's called TeamViewer. And it's a software that allows you to connect to someone's computer and see their screen and control their computer remotely. Okay, so you do this through the internet. So what I'm doing is this. I give my students the download link, the link that already starts to download TeamViewer so that they can install because installing TeamViewer is super easy. You just have to press like one button, the accept button and the installation starts, okay? And maybe sometimes you have to change the choice to install and for personal use be, because you don't want to be commercial use because commercial use is paid. So it's easy for the person, but that allows me to not only see what they are doing and to tell them, no, press here, press here, but to control their computer and fix any mistakes they made and to install stuff they need me to install so that their computer is working. So this is a software that I'm using for my students, but that is very useful for you who understands a little bit of computers to help your family members and your friends who don't and who can't bring the computer to you and say, fix my computer, <laughs> okay, right now because they're all quarantined. I actually used this with a family member just the other day to 
to fix the blunder she had done on her computer. And she usually does just that. She just shows up here and says, oh, here's my computer. So I know every family has someone who understands <laughs> computers and who helps everyone else. For you, if you're that person, or if you want to send this to that person so they know how to, to use this, this is the software you want <laughs> to be able to continue to help your family from your quarantined isolation, okay, <laughs> without seeing them personally. They also have a free plan and a, and a paid plan. The paid plan isn't cheap, and for personal use, for family use, even for my use with just a few of my students, you don't need that because you have up to uh, many connections you can make on a, with computers with the free plan and the capabilities that are on the paid plan are the only people who need that are people who are supporting hundreds of computers at once, okay? Hundreds of systems at once and they need to be connected to those systems all the time. So they need to be able to save computers for easy connection later, for easy support later. They need to be able to, to install in a bunch of computers simultaneously and stuff like that. That's not the use you're gonna use, do, and frankly, that's not even the use I do make of this. So the free account is gonna be more than enough for you. You only have to be careful that, that when you install, you choose install, not, not the remote access or stuff like that. You choose install, and you choose for personal use, okay? Not commercial. So this is for meetings. This is for meetings, but let's say you're a teacher at a school and your school said, no, we're, we're, the students are still gonna be expected to watch your class, but we're not gonna have live classes. We, what we did is we got here and we're gonna upload uh, vi recorded video. So you need to record your class and upload to this place. Okay, how do you do that? You're gonna maybe have to record your screen. So, and edit your video. And when I say edit your video, I'm not expecting a Hollywood production, okay? I'm expecting something where just you clean your video from your mistakes and maybe from noise. So here, TechSmith has a software that's called Snagit that is for recording your screen. So you can record your, your screen and your webcam like I'm recording right now. That's very easy to use, very intuitive. It's paid, but for institutions and teachers, who are transitioning to remote lessons, they are offering up to June 2020. So you'd have April, May, and June, okay, the whole month of June to use for free, okay? They are offering these two tools, the Snagit and the TechSmith Video Review, which is a platform where you can upload your videos and people can make comments, ask questions and stuff like that. So maybe for your school, that'd be interesting exactly because of that. But they, they are not live videos. They are pre-recorded videos, okay, that you can upload. But they're like here, they're up to June 30th of 2020. They're gonna be free. And you have to fill the form to prove that you're, you know, eligible for this exemption they're giving to try and help. Like I said, uh, their software is very easy to use. There's a free software called OBS Studio that you can donate to the project if you want, but you don't need to pay to use. That is this software here is the software I use, okay? And it's my preferred software. But again, I sell classes, I sell, I sell courses, video online courses. So I do a lot of more stuff, more professional, more careful things, right? to be able to do this. So this software isn't intuitive and is a bit complicated to use. Isn't impossible, okay? You can learn the software very easily with tutorials online. Most of the tutorials are geared towards gaming because the software was created for streaming, for streaming of games. But a lot of tutors use this software because this is really good software that allows you to make a lot of scenes, different scenes, and you work with scenes and sources. So you can see here that I have a lot of audio inputs. You can record audios in different tracks and stuff like that. I have a course on Udemy that explains how to use the software, but unfortunately the course is for OBS and Premiere, and Premiere is a, an, a 
paid editing software. And in this video, I'm trying to focus on free software for you. But in case you're interested, I'm going to leave the, the link below. But if you have patience, you can find tutorials online and you can watch the tutorials that I made for gamers and extract what you need for yourself. Okay, which is what I did when I started. In my course, I summarized all the tutorials I had seen and summarized what's interesting for, for video tutorials, for recording video tutorials. So that might be interesting for you, but you can find YouTube tutorials, okay? Now I'm gonna talk about editing because you recorded your screen, you recorded yourself. Now I'm gonna talk about editing. There's DaVinci Resolve, which is a professional editing software, but that has a pay, a free and paid version. And the free version is more than enough for you. The paid versions has a few more features that really the only people who need them are people who are gonna be doing super productions, okay? for you, for doing a video for YouTube, for doing a making a class that you're making because you can't give your usual on-site presential, uh, right, <laughs> live class. You can use the free version easily. Uh, if you look online, they're gonna say, oh, DaVinci Resolve is a complex pro software to use, complicated to learn. That's true if you wanna do a Hollywood production again, uh, but, because there's a lot of features, there's color corrections, there's effects, there's animation, there's audio treatment that you can use. And that part works with nodes and is a bit different than usual tools. So you have a learning curve, but to cut the video, to cut out your silences where you had to stop, where you had to correct yourself, to cut that out, all you need is the timeline and then the edit tab. And that one works very similar to other editing tools and it's very easy to learn okay you can find several tutorials online that are gonna teach you that to how to cut and how to put clips together and how to export the video in 10 20 minutes if you are interested and you want to learn the software as a whole it's very nice software like I said you can Hollywood productions are made on that software okay <laughs> but for what you need the part that you're going to need is very simple. If you have, okay, if you have a older version of Windows and there are people who have Windows 7 still, okay, you can use Windows Movie Maker, comes with Windows. Uh, from Windows 8 onward, they didn't have Movie Maker anymore. But if you have, then you already have an editing tool. A very simple, that doesn't have a lot of features, but that again, for making a video easily of the lesson that you were gonna give at the school, but now have to give to your webcam, that's more than enough. The same for people who have a Mac or a iPhone or an iPad, there's iMovie, okay, that's also, uh, you, iMovie used to be paid, but nowadays is among the free software that you can download that you, you, you get a free, Apple apps that you can download, iMovie is among them. Again, for a simple, for something that you're not gonna do color correction, you're not gonna do, you're just gonna do a simple video without a lot of stuff, more than enough. A detail about these is that they're installed in your computer, so you need a minimum of processing power and RAM memory. So you need at least eight gigabytes of RAM memory so that you don't get freezed. And if you're using DaVinci, you need a list, a good graphics card that has at least two gigabytes of VRAM. And you need a lot of storage space because videos are heavy files. There are big files. If you don't have a, a semi-decent computer, okay, doesn't need to be a great computer. It needs to be a semi-decent computer. If you have like a Chromebook or something like that, something that doesn't have a lot of processing power, the solution is to use a, a, an online platform like WeVideo because what you need to edit videos on WeVideos is a good internet. You don't actually need processing power because the processing power is in their servers and unfortunately they're paid okay because the free version is just lets you 
uh, export five minutes of video, so that's not going to be enough. You're probably going to need the version that costs eight dollars minimum because the other one just lets you the cheaper one that's lets you 30 minutes. And again, if you're giving an hour lecture, that's not enough. But this is an option if you don't have a computer with a lot of storage and a minimum of processing power. I think Dropbox and Google Drive and uh, Microsoft OneDrive and stuff like that is also going to be very useful to you, especially if you have to work on the same documents, okay, because you can share your folders with other people, you can share your documents. With Google Docs, you can work simultaneously on the same document. With Dropbox, if you're using, instead of using your office that is installed in your computer, you use your web browser, okay, and you use your Word and your Excel from the drop Dropbox page, you can, again, work simultaneously on the same document. So that's very useful. So basically, those are several tools. This was a very long video and a special edition <laughs> video uh, for this quarantine. So these are several tools that, that I think can help you out to work remotely, both to have meetings and to work, you know, on documents on other with other people and to teach if you're a teacher and stuff like that. A few shooting tips. Try having a well-lit place. If you have lamps available to you, try placing lamps, two lamps in front of you and one behind or at least one in front of you to be well lit. Try recording in smaller places to avoid echo and with soft surfaces like furniture and curtains and carpets to avoid echo. Try uh, the recommendations, if is if you look on the web, is going to be for you to close your windows and doors to avoid outside noise, like that. <laughs> and but the health recommendation is the opposite: it's for you to leave your windows and and doors open for air circulation. So right now, favor your health. Okay, everyone's going to understand health is more important than audio quality. For meetings, use headphones so that you don't have an echo of this of the your microphone capturing what's coming out of your speaker and then transmitting again use external microphones plug in an external microphone to your phone to your computer okay you usually cell phones come with a headphone microphone combo that's more than enough unless you have an apple phone <laughs> and then you have gonna have a problem. But try to use an external microphone closer to your mouth, but not in front of your mouth, okay? Because if you're in front of your mouth, you're gonna get your air. Try to use the microphone right below your mouth, okay? Uh, take care on this, at this time, stay at home. This is the most important thing that all of us can do to help to s us get over this problem is to stay at home and respect the quarantine, especially in places like here in Brazil and like uh, in the US and places like that where this is starting, okay? This just started this week. I still see a lot of people here in Brazil who think, it, think we're exaggerating and aren't taking things seriously. And I heard that in the US there's, this is also happening. This is serious. I know people compare this to other stuff like traffic accidents and stuff like that and say, oh, but the, these uh, kill more, except one doesn't invalidate the seriousness of the other. Just because one is serious doesn't make the other one not serious, okay? And the biggest risk of this disease is that it's very contagious, that you are contagious where when you don't have symptoms so you might be already sick and not know that you're sick or you might be talking to someone who doesn't have symptoms and is already sick and is infecting you so stay at home use the the technology we have so that you can still stay connected to the people to the people you work the people you love very important for people who live alone okay <laughs> to stay connected to uh do call call their friends call call people and talk to them and stuff like that online but online okay so that there's no transmission of virus and to take this seriously because the this is highly contagious it's very easy to happen things like uh, we are seeing in europe of a lot of people getting sick very quickly and overwhelming 
the health system. That's the biggest risk in this disease is overwhelming the health system. We don't want to do that. So take this seriously. I know it's annoying. I've been home for five days and I'm already here. We're already here very irritated and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, uh, But do everything you need to do, okay? Wash your hands. Be careful. If you have to go out, go out just for what's essential, okay? If you have to buy stuff, your groceries and stuff like that, try buying online if you can have them delivered because then it's not that you have zero risk because you're still exposing yourself to the delivery person and to whoever packed your stuff, but that's two people instead of maybe 20 that you're going to be exposing yourself if you go to the store, okay? So favor those methods and be safe. And I'll see you next week. Next week, I'll be, uh, we're going to be back to Wednesdays, okay? See you then.